All power and glory go to God. All greatness is from God. When a hero stumbles, the cowards rejoice. Nothing feels better to a coward than to watch a brave guy fall. Now you guys might have seen in the news that I call coronavirus recently, and, and I did. Oops. I did. Because in the beginning of the pandemic, I have talked to a guy from a live entertainment business, and I asked him, when do we go back to work? He said, probably sometime in 2022. And I said, there is no stinking way I can wait that long. And I just tried to find a way to make it work. I mean, all of us who tried to take these... uh evasive tests and wear these masks so we can hang out and be together. Well, I tried that. And after doing all these months, after doing all these shows, dead nabbit, my number was up, and then I had the Rona. Aw, wham, wham. Cows rejoice in a time like this because they are so invested in being afraid. And when I said I had the coronavirus, an overwhelming majority of people wish me well and they say, we hope you feel better. We hope you take care of yourself. We don't want anything bad to happen to you. But there was a faction of people, these cowards, who said, you see that day, Chappelle? That's why we stay inside where it's safe. And we never tried anything. Well, enjoy yourselves, double crossers, because I'm better now. Now, years ago, a man named Edward Snowden came to notoriety. You remember him? Edward Snowden was the whistleblower. How many people felt about him was a split decision. Was he good? Was he bad? Was he right? Or was he wrong? I don't know. But what he did was, he did, excuse me, I belched. He detailed a government where the United States government is spying on their own citizens. And when, and when he did that, people didn't really care. If you remember the war on terrorists, remember one time the war on, terror, war on terrorists, and you had all these t war on terror, and you had these terrorists living amongst us. I mean, we, we had to do something. I mean, if they were spying on their own citizens, I mean, who has anything to hide? Nobody said anything. Remember that. And a few years later, after Michael Brown got killed and all these riots that took place in American cities like Ferguson and whatnot, you heard black Americans saying they are militarizing our police department and no one cared. Because the unrest was so uncomfortable and so daunting and all these Negroes look so angry. Nobody said anything. Remember that. On January 6th, well, the American citizens stormed the Capitol. You see, I'm from Washington, D.C. On all of my people that were in, that I grew up, they became Capitol Hill police officers. And I asked them what did they do that day. And what do we do? We were kicking crackers down the steps like double crossing 300, Negro. Trying to save our country. Watch the tapes. Watch that crowd that told Colin Kaepernick that he couldn't kneel during a football game. Try to beat a police officer to death with an American flag. Look at that mess. Take this Negro lesson. Take that Negro lesson. Wait, let me rephrase that. Take that Negro lesson. Take this Negro lesson. What was Edward Snowden talking about? Who are the terrorists now that they're looking for? That the U.S. government is looking for? It's you. Not me. Not my black Muslim tail. It's you. Who are they militarizing the police departments for? They didn't call the National Guard on my black tail. It's you. That's what white people did. That's what white people felt. That's how white people felt for black, what black people felt in 400 years, for 30 minutes, 
storm through the halls of the Capitol and rub their poop on the walls. They carried a stupid Confederate battle flag through the rotunda, but the Confederate Army didn't even do that. Double crosses, you went very far. It was a split decision. Well, it was a simple question. Do you have a country or not? And you said no. My gosh, man, we're in quite the pickle, aren't we? Now, if you can solve a black American's problems, then this country wouldn't have no problems. You are so worried about pronouns and this and that and whatever, but this is a very basic wrong. They kidnapped us. They brought us here. They treated us like garbage. And all of the time they did that, they were afraid that we would do what you would do in the same situation. But did we storm the halls of the Capitol and rub our poop on the walls? Well, of course not. Because if it worked, then we would have tried it. I know how to solve my problems. You need to know how to solve your problems. You need to know where your power lies. You are Americans, so your power lies within each other. A few weeks ago, I put a special out. I called it Unforgiven. I told people what my beef was with Comedy Central. I never talked about it. I demanded that the network pay me. Many of my colleagues and peers laughed at me because that was a ridiculous thing to demand. And they said, well, you signed the contract, so what are you even mad about? Here's the thing. I'm very good at minding my own business. And the trick to minding your own business is knowing what is your business. And all those people that talked about me, these cowards, well, they rejoice. They don't understand what greatness looks like. I never asked Comedy Central for anything. If you remember, I said, I'm going to my real boss and I came to you. Because I know where my power lies. I asked you to stop watching that show, my show, and thank God Almighty for you, you did. You made that show worthless. Because without your eyes, it's nothing. And when you stop watching it, they called me. And I got my name back. And I got my license back. And I got my show back. And they paid me millions of dollars. Thank you very much. When I took 12 years off and you put me right back on top when I came back, I couldn't thank you enough. You guys kept me free. I did not have to do what so many of my colleagues had to do because of you. I have no idea what freedom tastes like. This is a very special moment. I want to thank Ted Sarandos from Netflix, the CEO who took my show off his platforms and a financial detriment due to his company just because I asked him and I also want to thank Chris McCarthy of CBS Viacom this guy is younger than me and like most people younger than me they have an interest in making the past right and he did something that was very courageous and finally after all these years I can say to Comedy Central it's been a pleasure doing business with you cheers to you forever I'm rocking with you till the wheels fall off. Thank you very much and good night. And ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. I know it's been a while since I did a YouTube video, but what better way to come back to YouTube than to do an old video that was done one year ago, a reenactment of Dave Chappelle's redemption song, but revised and this time, I got all of the dialogue remembered. Well, it seems like every now and then a lot of things have changed. Different lifestyles, different attitudes, mood swings, but the same you. Time is flying like crazy and already we're about to see the end of 2023. So I decided it's about that time that I have to put my foot down and get back to what I love. And that's YouTubing. So, for all y'all who watched the revised version of, Rede of the Redemption song by Dave Chappelle, thank you very much for watching it. 
And if also, if you really enjoyed it, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, TC Jones Edits. Click the notification bell, and there will be more in stores. So until then, this is yours truly, Taylor Jones, after a long hiatus, signing out. Man, it feels good to do another video from YouTube after so long, because it's time to get back to the basics. Don't you agree? And also, shout out to Dave Chappelle.